I've never really, you know, expressed my passions on this channel. Stuff that I like, stuff that I'm interested in. I don't really know why, to be perfectly honest. It's not that I'm being private or anything like that, it's just, it's, I don't know why. But what exactly is my biggest passion? Is it music? Well, it, you could technically say that, but not really. Is it being a furry? That's definitely not it. Is it fashion? Nope. No, my number one biggest passion and thing that I get out of the most is kinky sweaty butt sex. No, no. That's wrong. No, for me personally, my biggest passion is racing and cars. Mechanical shit, you know, that kind of thing. Racing and cars was pretty much everything that I pretty much grew up around. There are three things. Fighting, drinking, and cars. And I love my cars. Absolutely love them. There's something about cars, engines, and racing that like, you know, makes me feel at home. It's like, it's my, it's my happy place. Now I know you're probably wondering, Cory, why haven't you posted like any racing stuff on your channel? Why haven't you posted any stuff about cars on your channel? And I can see your point. I have posted the video of me getting absolutely blackout drunk and driving with a wheel, and there's the other Forza videos. But the problem is, is that this is a gaming channel. It's Racing games are actually very difficult to get decent content out of. I've been passionate about racing and cars since I was around three or four years old. Thanks mainly to my brother. I'd say we like cars pretty uh, much yeah, the same. Yeah, we're 50-50 on that. Yeah. We? You've had that interest since, what, four? Yeah. But I was encouraging it at that age. I bought you loads of model cars yeah. and stuff like that. I think we're 50-50 on I completely cars. forgot about that. Me and my brother have always been huge car buffs. And when it comes to actual racing, we are both really competitive. So much so that when it comes to racing, my brother is my number one rival. If either of us beats one another, it's something that you can tell your mates in, I deserve a pat on the back for that. But so much so, none of us can actually decide who is the better driver or who is the biggest car nut. So we both just agree that it's a 50-50 thing. But that's been me since I was a kid. Raised and taught to love cars. And if you're actually the long time viewer, you actually may have spotted that I have shown my keen interest into cars. Oh my god, I have always loved this! I won. <laughs> Is it bad that I am this competitive or uh, just a little you should racing up, thing? <laughs> Once again, I am the king! If you've seen all those videos, then you can check them off your list and call yourself a proper doggo. Now you're probably wondering, what is the point of this video, Corey? I'll tell you, because there's this little thing that I love called sim racing. Short for simulated racing. Now I happen to be heavily into that, despite me not showing it very much. So today, we're gonna get into some good old-fashioned racing and hopefully teach you guys a few things. And also the premise of this video can be like to get you guys interested or if you already have a little bit of interest in sim racing, well, come along for the ride. It should be a good experience for everyone. Let's do this. I, by the way, I haven't scripted this video. I haven't thought it out. I literally just turned the camera on and I decided let's just run with it and see how things turn out because you know, fuck it, why not? So the first thing we're gonna talk about today is gear. Mainly, your racing rig. So this here is my rig. This is what I go online and do competitive racing with. It's a Logitech G920 with a shifter. You get force feedback with it, it's USB compatible, and if you spend a little bit of extra money, you can get the shifter. And if you're an American and wondering what this is, a shifter, this thing, you change gears with it. Very common over here in England. And all of this will probably set you around $350 for the steering wheel, shifter, pedals, and frame. The frame you have to buy separately. Now you're probably screaming at the screen saying, Corey, you're just showing off your fancy gear and stuff like that. You just wanted to make a video like this for the, for the hell of it. Tell you right away, that's just basic equipment. This is actually consumer grade and not really that high up. Despite its price, it is a very expensive hobby to get into. But by no means is this anything to boast about. Now, if you're wondering what decent equipment is in this hobby, you have to start looking at direct drive wheels, which they can cost thousands. And I do eventually want to upgrade to one of those at some point. But I'm not going to go into huge detail about that because I could literally go on for hours and hours and hours about them. So there's a link below to one of my favorite YouTubers. His name is Jimmy Broadbent. His channel is all about sim racing and he goes into great detail about equipment and racing techniques themselves. And I absolutely adore his channel. Also, if you like people with really happy voices, 
Just go watch his videos. Yes! Yes! Yeah. Uh, Jimmy, call me. We need to collaborate at some point. Now, you've got your gear, and you need something to play it on now. Because what good is all the gear when you don't have a game to play, or a simulator to play? Now, a lot of you who are new to this kind of stuff are probably thinking that I'm going to say Forza Motorsport. No, Forza is actually shite. Forza today is actually known as a simcade, which is like a cross between a simulator and an arcade game. The physics in it aren't great, and Forza is slowly dipping in quality. But you better believe that your boy Cory here is gonna help you out and make it all good for you. Hello, Pup Pup. In my mind, there are five options here. All of them are not perfect, all of them are better than Forza, but none of them are perfect. The king of racing physics would obviously be R Factor 2, but the only problem is the online stuff for that is actually shit. Then you have iRacing, which has got brilliant physics, and the online portion of iRacing is fantastic, but it's a subscription-based game. So you have to pay like every so amount of months, and iRacing can get very, very expensive. iRacing is kind of the thing that you get into once you are fully committed and you want to get into proper racing. But that's only if you are absolutely, truly passionate about the sport. Then you've got Project Cars 2, which is the game that me and the boys have been playing a lot. This game is definitely the prettiest of the games. The online portion of the game is really well done, and you get a good selection of tracks and cars. The only problem with it is, is that the physics aren't quite as good as they can be. They're brilliant physics, don't get me wrong, but some things aren't really that up to scratch. Then you've got Assetto Corsa. It is almost near perfect. The physics in the game are outstanding, almost as good as R Factor 2. The visuals are great, the online racing is fantastic. Now this is where it gets to be a downfall and a strength for Assetto Corsa because the game itself, unless you pay for the DLC, even when you pay for the DLC, doesn't have that great amount of content. You don't get that much. But the game allows mods, so you can add cars, you can add tracks, you can add tire models, you can add game modes, you can do all of this with a set of Corsa, which is why I would recommend buying a set of Corsa. But number five is probably the best option if you're just getting into it and you're starting out. It's a game called Race Room. Race Room is free for the small part. Race Room has got excellent physics, the game doesn't look too bad, and it's got great online racing. The problem with our, uh, Race Room though, is that it's the in-game purchase. If you want to race on a set, you get three classes of cars, not a lot, and you get three race tracks, which again is not a lot. So if you want to race with a certain car or a certain race track, you have to pay for it. But it is great for starting out in. But do the research yourself. There are five sims that I can recommend. So go check them all out if you must. Now, one of the things that people actually make a mistake on when they first join the game is that they jump right into races without learning the track and then they give up when everyone absolutely kicks their asses. It's a common problem. Don't worry, I got you sorted out with what you should do. The first thing you should obviously do is learn the race track that you're going on. So go into a practice run, get in with some bots, and just drive around, learn the track, get the racing line sorted, and you'll be fine. Hey guys, just to quickly interject here, I've left a video or link in the description about racing lines and how to take corners quickly, since it's a very big topic, and we obviously don't have time to put that all into one video, because it's worth a video by its own, so there's a link in the description if you want to like learn racing lines and how to get round corners quickly. That's all. However, don't use hot lapping as definitive practice. Well, Corey, that's two things conflicting at the same time. Yes, but there is a good reason for it. Hot lapping is great for learning the track, but that's it. Don't think that getting the absolute best lap time makes you the best racer, because it simply doesn't. Because when you're hot lapping, you can go around again and again and again and again, and you always win, technically. But when you're in a race, an online race, can't restart. If you make a mistake, it's on you. You can't just go around again and again and again. Because if you have a crash, that's it. Your race is gone. All that practice of going around has done nothing. Get in with some very difficult bots and race against those. And don't restart the race over and over again, because that... You just simply can't do that with online races. But use hot lapping for learning the circuit, but that's it. Learn to race. It is a common mistake for people to do. Now, let's get on and actually do some driving. 
Okay, so apologies for the microphone quality. I had to switch over to my headset because I don't want to have to keep on leaning over while I'm racing because I, I want to actually concentrate. Also, please do remember that if I do something shit, that's because I've got, not got my glasses on under here and I'm looking out of one eye. So I am also very, very blind in here. But anyway, we've joined an online lobby. Uh, we're gonna. I've qualified for 11th, so our target for today is to try and get where to my near 7th. Here we go. Cue the music. All right, it's not a bad start, pretty good start. We're getting some ground on this hurricane that just went straight by. We're gonna get really early on the brakes, try and get down into first gear and try and get through on the inside. And that actually works a lot better than it usually does. So right now, got a great getaway, overtaking cars left and right. No one seems to be blocking anyone for some reason, but uh, everyone is also on the cold tires. So just gotta be wary of people slowing down. Like this guy in front of us has slowed down a little bit. So we're just going to try and keep a little bit of ground on him, get on the power early, get back down into fifth gear because we've lost some power in sixth gear. Now we're back up there. Now we've got a bit of a roadblock going up on here. Uh, between the Z4 and a 458. Going to have to get early on the brakes because I don't know what these guys like. I get slightly pushed off by the Porsche behind us, but we managed to claim the position back by uh, closing the door on him. Yeah, let's get up and down. Get up to, up to fourth gear and then sweetly down into second gear. Keep it hug on the inside. We'll get through the. Oh, hang on. No. The Z4s. I thought he was going to close the door on me, but he makes a mistake. We try and actually get around on the outside. Ah! Fuck. We went a little bit wide there. Oh, we've already got one person that's retired. Okay, down one gear. Let it course through here. Get on the power early. He went way too quick in there, but he shuts the door on me. Not quite happy with that kind of behavior. On the brakes, get it early, turn it in. Went a bit slow through there. Something, Something's wrong with my handling a little bit. Oh, he taps the brakes. His tires must be heated up yet. Means we're just going to sail past him through here, get late on the brakes, as late as I dare go in there, but he still manages to get the upper hand. What are you doing, mate? Get out of the way! Alright, late on the brakes, as late as I can go. First gear. Still manages to close off on us. This guy's actually starting to annoy me a little bit, but... His getaway from that turn in was pretty, pretty poor. Try and get through. We've got to go. Have to let go of the power, otherwise we'll get a penalty for going off the track. But we managed to beat him out of that corner. He slows right down. I think he might have actually spun out. I can't tell. But he has disappeared rather quickly. Right. Okay. We're in fifth, uh, fourth position now. Let's start making some ground on this 458 ahead of us. Now, for some reason, I really don't like driving that 458 that's up ahead. It's uh, not a good car for me. I find that the tail end is just way too happy for me, and I just can't get the grip down. Even though a lot of people seem to love driving it, and they are very difficult to keep up with. But for me, I like driving this Porsche. This Porsche is just so much more planted. Now in other cars, like the F1 car, you can pretty much almost go flat through here. Bloody hell, that was a terrible line. Luckily the guy in front, I think we're actually gaining a bit of time on him. There was a big um, load of traffic behind us. I think that Z4 is holding up a load of other people. Oh, oh. I am I am trying my best here, Douglas. <laughs> but I don't know where the guys in first and second do. Oh, there they are. They just seem to have sailed away. But this 458 is quite slow. He seem, I think he's trying very hard, but I don't think he wants to make a mistake either. I've got a fucking itchy arm. Right, let's get on the brakes a bit earlier this time. Hopefully we can get the inside. Ah, lock up. 
Lock up. That's another thing that I didn't mention from earlier, is that whenever you get a bit of a lock up, just start pumping the brakes. Like just, as soon as it locks up, let go of it slightly and just go on and off. But very slightly. Oh yeah, he had to lift off through there. No doubt in my mind. My lap times are terrible. I've just noticed. On the brakes, as late as I possibly did. Ah, we're going to go wide. Going to go wide. Ah, messed that up. Lost some time there. Hard on the brakes. Down to the second gear. Now, a lot of people like to go wide, but for some reason, I'm just a bit more comfortable hugging it. I know it's not the quickest way around that corner. I know that, but I just like to hug it for a bit of security. I could have done that a little bit better. Ah, terrible corner. But the good news is we're, we are making progress on this guy in front of us. Sorry, I just almost fucking snapped my ankle. Because I broke way too late there. Oh, he's defending his line. But that is the racing line as well that he was taking. So I don't know what I'm talking about. Oh. I don't know what it is, I keep clipping that inside corner and I hate it. Makes the car go all a bit squiffy. Alright, I'm going to have him here. Right, move over. Cheeky look on the inside. Oh, shit. Oh, I am sorry. I think I've just sent him off. Oops. But I was on the inside and I just clipped the edge of the curb and it's just sent me over to the wide side. So I might have just... Might have actually killed that Ferrari driver accidentally. Alright, I can see the guys ahead, but they're just coasting away. They're absolutely flying. Uh, I think it's safe to say I don't think I'll be catching them this race. But in four laps, we've done something pretty much amazing. Gone from 11th to 3rd. Well. Might as well just have a pleasant conversation now. One thing that's very, very important for when you're practicing your race circuits is know your braking points. Whenever you go into a game or a racetrack like this one, you'll notice around the side of the tracks, you'll see uh, like white boards that say 100, 50, 150. And I know if, to a lot of you that might be obvious, but if you just, if this whole thing really wants you to get into sim racing, what that means is how many meters until the corner. Oh, sugar. So 100 meters there. But I think we might be making a bit of progress on the guys ahead. Spa is such a fun track to race on. It is an absolute joy. This corner always makes my butthole tighten. They are just out of reach for this race. The guy behind me gaining on me. One th another thing that I forgot to mention from earlier is that whenever you're racing like this and you're going around a corner, a lot of people think that just simply braking on and off and getting the throttle on and off is a clean way of getting... Fucking hell. Is a clean way of getting around a corner. You don't want to be doing that. You want to just keep a nice consistent rate instead of just going <laughs> through a corner. You want to just keep the throttle nice and level so then you can just gradually put more power on more power and then full power once you exit the corner you never want to like just like tap the throttle because that is really unsteady it's a smoother way of getting around a corner as well what is up with my lap times i qualify with a 219 and i can barely get past 221 my best lap on this circuit is 217.8 uh, yeah i hate to admit it but there is a guy behind me that is gaining on me like no tomorrow so i'm gonna have to really push now sure i think the tires are going the back end's starting to get very loose and I'm understeering a lot when I'm going into a corner. It's costing me a lot of time. Oh, fuck. I'm just going to have to attack this corner. Shit, that went wide. Oh, fuck. No, no, no. Shit. And there goes a Corvette. Right, okay. Got a lot of work to do now. Oh, there's a big crowd behind us as well. 
Shit, the card, the card doesn't feel right. I've really broken something. I think I might have wing damage or diffuser damage. I'm not entirely sure. Shit, the car is so tail happy again all of a sudden. Ah, no! The tires are gone. I've got damage. If I manage to keep this fourth position, I'll be unbelievably lucky. Come on. The guys behind me are right up my ass. Fuck, all that time I gained on those guys in second and uh, uh, first place. They were racing really well though. Now I've just got to hold them off for a little bit more. Just a little bit more. One more lap, I can hold them off. Either way though, despite that little crash, we're well above our target because online races and online lobbies are notoriously difficult because every single one of them is a decent driver. It's not like a bot where you can just like adjust the difficulty like willy-nilly. Online lobbies are a completely different story. So the fact that we've went from 11th to 4th in an online lobby is amazing. That's the best progress I've ever done. And I'm doing it in first suit. I had to push the brakes hard there. Holy shit. Alright, okay. I don't know what's going on, but I'm actually pulling away from the guys behind me. Either I'm getting very lucky, and I'm that good, or the guys behind me are genuinely that bad. Oh, don't make the mistake. Oh, fuck! Don't make the same mistake again. Which also reminds me, after this race, I want to start hosting tournaments for you guys. Start racing in them. Get you, you guys can like come and race me and stuff like that. I would absolutely adore to do something like that with you guys. But I don't know how I would do it. Basically, I'd set rules so you'd have to have a wheel with force feedback and the capability to do manual shifting. Then I'd get about 30 of you doggos, if you guys are willing to take part. And hopefully, there'll be some prize money involved. But, 11th to 4th, there we go, that's the end of the race. Fucking hell. God damn. That was tough. Hey up doggos, it's Corey here and I just wanted to say thank you for watching this video. I know it's been a bit of a slapdash uh, job and there hasn't been that much detail, but I am grateful for you guys watching it. But honestly, I would appreciate your feedback, honest feedback about this video. If you would like to see more of this kind of stuff or you wouldn't like to see more of this kind of stuff, let me know if this has actually piqued your interest into getting into sim racing. Because honestly, it is a sport that I'm really passionate about and I really do enjoy racing and making these kind of videos, even though they're not really comedy based, which is what you normally guys tend to watch. Watch. So I would really love to hear what you guys think and if you want more then I'll happily make more of these kind of videos And obviously I'll group up with the boys and we'll do some dumb shit again like getting drunk and stuff like that with driving or just doing silly challenges But anyway, I've gone on long enough. This video is way too long as it is already So I shall end it right here. Thank you guys for watching and I shall see you all in the future video. Bye. Bye